Welcome back to the D. Woods School of Quranic Instruction, where Muslims receive an Islamic education free of charge, best deal on the internet. Early this morning, I received a challenge from a young Muslim woman concerning my claims about the scientific accuracy, or should I say inaccuracy, of the Quran. Hayam writes, LOL, the dude in the movie clearly said scientists from different religions so every trash you said is not valid here. Plus, God did not say none of that censored about stars and demons, the Quran, I dare you to find that. And if it was translated by some stupid fatined of yoyers, then this is not Quran's problem. Go educate yourself a little bit before attacking religions with extremely stupid and nonsense claimings. Hayam is responding to my video, Science and Islam, a reply to a thousand and one inventions and the library of secrets. The link is in the description box. Let's focus on the dare here. Plus, God did not say none of that censored about stars and demons. The Quran, I dare you to find that. You dare me? You dare to dare the dizzle? Challenge accepted. Let's begin with Surah 67, verse 5 of the Quran. Since you're worried about, quote, some stupid fatigued of yoyers doing the translation, we'll read six translations, four Muslim translations and two non-Muslim translations. Pictal. And verily we have beautified the world's heaven with lamps, and we have made them missiles for the devils, and for them we have prepared the doom of flame. Yusuf Ali. And we have, from of old, adorned the lowest heaven with lamps, and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away the evil ones, and have prepared for them the penalty of the blazing fire. Hilleli Khan, and indeed we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away the shayateen, devils, and have prepared for them the torment of the blazing fire. M. H. Shakir, and certainly we have adorned this lower heaven with lamps, and we have made these missiles for the shaitans, and we have prepared for them the chastisement of burning. Arbery, and we have adorned the lower heaven with lamps, and made them things to stone satans, and we have prepared for them the chastisement of the blaze. Palmer, and we have adorned the lower heaven with lamps, and set them to pelt the devils with, and we have prepared for them the torment of the blaze. So Allah has adorned the lowest heaven with lamps, and he uses these lamps as missiles to drive away demons. The first mystery is, what are these lamps that he's referring to? Fortunately for us, Allah explains in Surah 37, verses 6 through 10, Verily we have adorned the near heaven with the stars for beauty, and to guard against every rebellious devil. They cannot listen to the higher group, angels, for they are pelted from every side, outcast, and theirs is a constant or painful torment, except such as snatch away something by stealing, and they are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. So, the lamps that Allah refers to in Surah 67 verse 5 are stars. What are stars? Stars are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons. When demons try to eavesdrop on the conversation of the angels, the demons are pelted with stars. If a demon steals something, he'll be pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. What is this flaming fire of piercing brightness that pursues a demon? Allah seems to be referring to a shooting star, in which case the Quran is saying that a shooting star is a star that Allah has hurled at a demon. How can we know if we're understanding these passages correctly? Well, we go to the all-time greatest interpreter of the Quran, the Prophet Muhammad. Sunan Ibn Majah 194. It was narrated from Abu Hurairah that the Prophet said, When Allah decrees a matter in heaven, the angels beat their wings in submission to his decree, with a sound like a chain beating a rock. Then, when fear is banished from their hearts, they say, What is it that your Lord has said? They say, the truth, and he is the most high, the most great. He said, then the eavesdroppers from among the jinn listen out for that, one above the other, so one of them hears the words and passes it on to the one beneath him, 
The Shahab, shooting star, may strike him before he can pass it on to the one beneath him, and the latter can pass it on to the soothsayer or sorcerer, or it may not strike him until he has passed it on, and he adds one hundred lies to it, and only that word which was overheard from the heavens is true. Jamiat Termidi, 3224. Ibn Abbas narrated, We were with the Messenger of Allah while he was sitting with a group of his companions when they saw a glowing shooting star. The Messenger of Allah said, When you saw the likes of this during Jahiliyyah, what would you say about it? They said, We would say that a great man had died or that a great man had been born. The Messenger of Allah said, It is not shot due to the death of anyone nor his coming into life. Rather, when our Lord, blessed is His name and Most High, decrees a matter, He is glorified by the bearers of the throne. Then He is glorified by the inhabitants who are below them, then those below them, until such glorification reaches this heaven. Then the inhabitants of the sixth heaven asked the inhabitants of the seventh heaven, What did your Lord say? He said, So they informed them, then the inhabitants of each heaven seek the information until the news is conveyed to the inhabitants of the heavens of the earth. The shayateen try to overhear, so they are shot at, so they cast it down to their friends. Whatever they came with is true, as it is, but they distort it and add to it. Notice the context here is Muhammad explaining what shooting stars are. Allah decides to do something, and the angels flap their wings in submission. The demons hear the wings flapping, so they know something's about to go down, and they try to listen in. Then, the angels start passing Allah's decision down through the heavens. Eventually, a demon overhears the plan, so Allah and the angels grab some stars and pelt the demon to try to stop him. Occasionally, the demon escapes with the secrets he stole. He passes the secrets on to the soothsayers and sorcerers, but he adds a bunch of lies. Then the soothsayers and sorcerers tell their followers what will happen in the future, and their predictions come true, because there's an element of truth that was stolen from Allah. That's why you shouldn't believe these soothsayers and sorcerers even when they get something right. What they got right was stolen from Allah, but lies were added to it. So, when you see a shooting star, it's because Allah and his angels hurled a star at a demon that was trying to escape with some stolen information. Now that we have Muhammad's commentary and the context, let's read Surah 37, verses 6 through 10, one more time. Verily, we have adorned the near heaven with the stars for beauty, and to guard against every rebellious devil. They cannot listen to the higher group, angels, for they are pelted from every side, outcast, and theirs is a constant or painful torment, except such as snatch away something by stealing, and they are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. Pretty clear, right? And clearly wrong. It's so obviously wrong that if you tell a Muslim what the Quran says, the Muslim will accuse you of lying because the Muslim, who's never actually read the Quran, can't believe that the Quran could ever say something so irretrievably stupid. What was Hayam's challenge? Plus, God did not say none of that censored about stars and demons. The Quran, I dare you to find that. Found it! Hayam, if you decide to remain a Muslim after seeing that Allah says things that you know are false, you'll need to take the advice of Muhammad's companion Abu Qatada from Sahih al-Bukhari. Abu Qatada mentioning Allah's statement, And indeed we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, Surah 67 verse 5, said, The creation of these stars is for three purposes, and they are, one, as decoration of the nearest heaven. We saw that in 67.5. Allah adorned the nearest heaven with lamps. Two, as missiles to hit the devils. We saw that in 67.5 and 37.6 through 10, and from Muhammad in the Hadith. And three, as signs to guide travelers. We didn't read that, but it's Surah 6, verse 97. So, if anybody tries to find a different interpretation, he is mistaken and just 
wastes his efforts and troubles himself with what is beyond his limited knowledge. In other words, Hayam, turn off your reasoning ability and mindlessly accept what Allah says. Or leave Islam.